bids are in, the gavel's dropped. Ladies and gentlemen here at WineBid, we are finally hammered. That's right, this is WineBid's podcast dedicated to all things wine auction, wine retail, wine value, and of course, wine. My name is Jeff Gern on WineBid's uh, marketing team. With me as always is our illustrious wine expert and wine <laughs> auction expert, Paul Walker. Welcome to the podcast, Paul. Paul, What's we up? are talking about what's coming in auction this week we're going to start by focusing on france we always start with bordeaux well you uh, always start with bordeaux because you always start this off. always start with <laughs> bordeaux you're in this with me we're a team all <laughs> a and team no i don't play team sports where we go one we go all right <laughs> there are no lone wolves in the wine world paul i really, really? this in the wine podcast <laughs> no world there are not one lone big, wolves one big happy family i guess that's that's right. It's a team sport here. I usually don't spend a ton of time talking about, I mean, we talk about first gross occasion. I thought it was really interesting to see a uh, mag of 06 Latour OWC coming to auction for 1150. That's cool. That, 06, 06, like single mag in OWC? Yeah. Single oh, mag cool. OWC. I nice. thought that was kind of a, that was kind of a cool thing uh, to, to pull down from Latour. I wouldn't, we don't see as much Latour as we see of other stuff. We see a, a good amount of Latour. I feel like I don't see Latour mags come in all the time, but I thought that was a super interesting one. We had just a glut, like a, a, a torrent of Lynch Baj coming into auction yeah. from a lot of different time periods. I've actually had the 85 and it's fantastic, even though I, you know, I don't know that 85 was a particularly amazing year in Bordeaux. It was but, good. It was good vintage. There's but, some, some great 85s. Well, but yeah, 80, you're right. 80, 85 Lynch Baj is fantastic. You have mentioned that before too, that you've had it. Did you yeah. have, you had it again since you mentioned it last time? Maybe. <laughs> Who's counting? Um, I am because um, I want to know. You want to know? I have not had it since the last time we talked. Uh, 83, Chichon Longueville Comtesse de la Longue. I mentioned this one. It's been getting good tasting notes recently. And it's a nice birth year anniversary year bottle because we are in uh, uh, we are in the year where if you know somebody who's turning 40, if you've been married for 40 years or there's a 40th something, this could be a, a fantastic bottle to add. 210 yeah. doesn't seem outrageous to me for that bottle, especially with 40 years of age. I actually picked out also the 88 Chateau La Maison Aubryon. Uh, That's funny. That was, that was one of my picks. I didn't have too many Bordeaux picks because I didn't want to sound repetitive with all the wines, you know, that we always talk about, but I did pick out the 88 La Mission because I think it's compared to, you know, some of the other vintages, you know, not near it, I should say like 89 and 90, you know, which are, we've talked about, which are two and three times as much. Uh, the 88's relative deal at 280. And that I've had that wine. It's good. It's really, really good. 88 Oprah and La Mission. They're, they're, they're both fantastic. I have not had that wine, but it looked, fa- it looked fantastic. Every you should try I, it. I mean, grab a bottle. I have not, well, I've not had the 88. I thought it was cool. We had the, an 89 Montrose. That mm-hmm. one, um, a hundred, that's a hundred point wine right there. I know that's really important to you, but well, no, it's we, interesting because the 89, the 89 and 90 are both, 100 point wines but the 90 has always been quite a bit more and i i've never really figured out why i think it's you know as a vintage on the right bank 89 in a lot of cases was equally as good but i so i never understood why 89 mantras went for well right now right 385 i think is the the reserve and yeah 90 is at 570 it, it i mean the 90 mantras is supposedly you know one of these kind of legendary i don't i haven't had it in years i don't remember what it tastes like but it is one of these kind of legendary wines in the same realm as you know like 89 oprion and some of these other things but again that that seems like a relative deal 385 compared to the to the 570 for the 90. it's about finding the good deal <laughs> you want you want a hundred point epic bottle of montrose but you don't want to pay 575 get yourself an 89 for 385 bucks she was still making a fantastic bottle. Paul says it's it's just as good, if not better, than the ninety. Is what I heard. I didn't say that. I well, said, that's it, I'm I'm paraphrasing. 
That's um, what you're hearing. Well, That's I think everybody uh, ears are filtering the strange information. So. Well, you, you just you talk a lot, and I ha- you know That's you true. talk a lot, so I have to I have to interpret. While we're you know we're just talking about the right bank ninety four Clin A. Yeah, that's that's a, that's an interesting one because eighty it's bucks, not a, not a great vintage, but but it's eighty bucks, <laughs> inexpensive for a Clin A. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah. that's not far it's, off of what you. It's got to be drinking great right now. What are your What are your little buddies say over at Cellar Tracker about uh, it? My great. my besties. The tasting notes say that it's drinking well right now. I mean, but even at eighty bucks, I think it's worth rolling the dice on something like that. I'm it's it's got to be good. That's got to be tasty. That's a that's a cool wine. You know, again, I always say this, and I'm always wrong. But ninety fours, we don't see that often. I don't think we've seen ninety four Clean A for a while. Uh, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying that we haven't seen this wine in a long time because I know that's a controversial statement. So it is. Anyway, it's an incredibly controversial statement. I'll bring up one more Bordeaux from Procter and Gamble. It's the 1956 <laughs> Chateau Gillette Demi Sec. Uh, so I'm just assuming that's a Procter and Gamble wine. Uh, now you're going to get in trouble. No, I'm going to get no. Some I'm other, gonna, yeah, I'm some, other, some other legal reason. Uh, okay, it might not be Procter and Gamble. That was a joke. Chateau. July demi sec. Uh, this is interesting because yeah, the- this is wild. I don't even remember seeing. I mean, demi sec. What does that mean in terms of like you know, so it turns there's got to be some kind of a what bricks at harvest reason for this, or maybe it's like residual sugar levels or something. It's something that requires some research, but that that's really cool. That's a really neat bottle. It's also low octane. Well, relatively 14%, according to the back label. What's funny. If you look up demi sec Sauterne, this mm-hmm. is Chateau Gillette's the only one that comes up. <laughs> oh, interesting. Or at least it's the only one I can, it's, it's definitely the top wine. Right. <laughs> Definitely the, the top one that, that, that comes up. I had to mention that because I thought that would be super interesting. I was curious if you'd had any demi sex on turn. No, that that's that's a rarity for me, for sure. That's but, that's very cool. And 56, I, too, like 56. A, like a very odd sounding vintage just from knowing, you know, famous Bordeaux vintages like 55 and 59 and 53. 56 does not ring the same bell in my fraught memory as an avid gillette consumer this one definitely piques my interest <laughs> very very cool that's a very interesting wine that's a yeah, that's a that's a one-off special for sure we'll uh, never see it again never yeah. <laughs> like, famous last words next week it's gonna it, it's gonna we're be gonna like see, what three liters <laughs> yeah three liters six liters there's some you know 12 bottle case owc <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah, did you notice actually? I did notice that last hammer of this wine was three hundred and forty-one dollars. So one eighty seems like a quite a deal. You're right. In 2021, <laughs> it went for three hundred and forty-one dollars. And now yeah. it's like, yeah, be interesting to see how that goes. Um, any any other Bordeaux you want to bring up? There was yeah, I, like uh, like I said, I only had two exa- two examples, and there is some uh Chateau Menet in which I think is kind of undersung, underappreciated, always seems to be a pretty decent deal. 95 was a great vintage and I think it's probably drinking really well now and it's 50 bucks. So that's, uh, that was what I picked out from Santa Steph. It's really, it's really, really good stuff that I think it's never been, you know, out of the park, big Parker scores or anything like that, but it's, I've had quite a bit of this wine from the nineties and I think it's delicious. And what, what is it? Menet? Menet. Yeah. M A M A Y N E Y. And there's a couple bottles of the 95 in this week. I think there's three of them actually, or no, four of them, excuse me. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what I, that was my other pick besides the 88 La Mission. And that, that was it for Bordeaux. Let's go to Burgundy. I'd love to bring up uh, something that I think would be a phenomenal birthday gift for me. 2001 Domain Romani Conti Latash six bottle lot OWC. Oh, wow. I suppose I shouldn't say that we don't see a lot of six <laughs> bottle cases of DRC coming through because I'm going to get in trouble if I say something like that. This is one of the first times I've seen a case. <laughs> well, you obviously yeah. hadn't seen much because there's there's so many wood cases of this. 
like everywhere there's stacked up in the corner it's, of the office in fact we just we just have a just a dearth a not a dearth the opposite uh, of a dearth <laughs> we oh, have we, a, a bevy a bevy my apologies we have a bevy of all sorts of domain romani content. you have a dearth of romani content in your cellar you should well you should you should stock up and get this six pack there's no bids on it so you know not yet for, for the low low price of twenty five thousand eight hundred dollars you too can be the owner of six bottles of Domain Romani Conti Latash inside an <laughs> original wooden case. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was interesting. And I went and looked at it just to see. It just seems like DRC just doesn't come along in six bottle OWC, uh, six bottle lots of OWC a lot, right? Nope. It happens. It's just not something you see every single week. I'm kind of interested to see if we'll see this one end up getting a little bit of action just because it does seem to be something that is not, I'm not going to say the R word. I will say it's not super. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. It's uh, in, in, you know, it's, it's always impressive to see six pack in woods of, of this kind of wine and a one, it's a bit of a controversial vintage. Um, I'll just say that there was some, some hail issues. I think it was a, a limited harvest, especially in certain parts of, of Burgundy. No doubt this is probably phenomenal. Yeah, no, there's some really cool Bur uh, Burgundy in this week, actually. Flag, if you wouldn't mind, I'll Go list a couple things. There was some some uh, Pustor, Volnay, the Clos de soissant uh different vintages I thought was 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 very cool. There's an 02, 05, and 15, so you have a trio of really great vintages for that wine. The 02s at 150, the 05s at 165 and the 15 is at 95. Um, there's a couple of beautiful bottles of, of Dujac. There's some uh, 95 Bun Mar, two bottles of that at 1220 a piece. And then there's a 99 Clos Saint Denis at 2100. Uh, amazing red vintages there. There's a 95 Ramonet Batard. We've seen a lot of really great Ramonet, including some huge bottles recently, but there's a, a five bottles of the 95 Ramonet Batard in at 555. Uh, there's a bottle of Guylaine Bartot, Chambon Musigny Le Fouet, 96 at 245. Really awesome producer, hard to find and not horrifically expensive. It's, you know, it's not in the same range as like Meunier, but it's uh, great stuff. And 96 is a, another great red vintage. Rene Angel Grand Echezo 95 or one bottle, I should say, for $2,080 reserve. 05 Sylvie Esmond and Cote de Nuit Village. I thought that was a really neat bottle for 50 bucks from, from 05. Great vintage there. And let's see. Yeah, there's a couple other things. A couple of Kamiji Rude wines, a Corton Languette, 893, excuse me, for 135, which I think is, yeah, I still think Camille Giroud is, is, Really fairly priced for just delicious, elegant wines. Anyway, 93 Corton Longuette for 135 And then 2012 Camille Giroud, uh, Maurice Saint-Denis Le Chaffo at 70. Neat wines there. And then also I, I flagged uh, 99 Antonin, Antonin Guillon Corton Clodois at 95. Cause it's just amazing, amazing red vintage and under a hundred bucks is always cool to see, you know, for something with 20 years plus from an awesome vintage. So those were my picks from Burgundy this week. Let's go to champagne. We had uh, some interesting champagnes coming into auction. Yeah. Uh, um, that I'd, I actually would love to get your thoughts on, but first and foremost, I wanted to, to point out, we had a bottle of 1990 La Grande Dame mag. Oh, Nice. For 570, which I thought was really cool to see a mag of Le Grand Dame uh, with, with that level of age. What do you call people who are really into sparkling wine? Sparklers? <laughs> or you're a huge sparkler. Talk to me about the stuff that, you know, you're you're particularly looking at. And uh, Yeah, no, for sure. There's, there's always things in that I don't recognize because there's so many small producers and I, I'm woefully ignorant in keeping track of of you know small production champagne I, I i love it but i just don't get the chance to try as many wines as i want and or read up about them i i notice there's um oh there's a wine called paul etienne saint germain uh sublime which is in this week 06 it's got a bit on it so it looks like somebody's going after it it's a 56 dollars that that caught my eye because i'd never heard of it 
And any, anytime I see something that's kind of in that 50 range that I don't know that has a bid, it's looks it's like, well, you know, this is probably stuff people are interested in and it's probably fairly priced. What about um, this, uh, what about this AJ Demier stuff? Yeah, exactly. That's something else I hadn't seen before. The Cuvée Lissandra at 50 and then it looks like the Solera 23. Uh it's got bids at 56. And I'm curious as to what that designation, obviously it's probably a blend of multiple vintages, maybe 23 vintages. That's just a guess. I don't know, but anyway, yeah, that's, I'd never seen that stuff before. So very cool to see that. Oh yeah. There's a one Pierre Peter Chetillon um, price seems to keep going up for these wines. The, the Cuvée Special Chetillon, these are just amazing. Uh, the O1 is in at 260 this week. There's some um, Vouet and Sorbet, which is a uh, leans toward a little bit more of a oxidative style. Not necessarily as much to my liking, but definitely has a following. Anyway, there's a, the 11 Brut Nature Sobre Blanc de Blanc. And then I think those were my champagne picks this week. There's quite a few other things in there. I just didn't, <laughs> didn't get a chance to even look at all of them. So, but uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff. Let's head to the Loire, where we mm-hmm. have just a an influx of, of Domaine Didier uh, Dagenau. 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 Pretty close. Not bad. Not bad. I was like, do I do it hard G, soft G? And I rolled the dice and I lost. This is a story of my, <laughs> when I gamble, I lose. Talk to me a little bit about this domain because we have just a ton of stuff coming in from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think we mentioned, was it probably last week, there was a single bottle of, I think of the Celex maybe from one of his last vintages because uh, Didier Dagano unfortunately passed away, I think in 07, uh he was flying i think an ultralight airplane that he built anyway it was really sad accident that occurred but he was you know known in the region for making incredibly um, delicious wines and they're still really really good uh the posthumous vintages i think his son i believe has taken over i could be wrong but anyway that's my hazy memory anyway they are delicious and Celex and pure sang we've got a couple of those there's oh two pure sang and Celex 01, I think I always get this wrong or mixed up, but one of them has, they have slightly different uh, Elevage treatments. Like one of them is like all steel fermentation, I think. And then the other one is like a mix of steel and wood. Can't remember for sure which is which, but anyway. And then there's also Montam, Montamne 08. What else is there also? There's the Puy Fume, Blanc de Fume, Blanc de Fume, excuse me, 09. So yeah, there's just, Really, 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 that's just, that's some of the best Sauvignon Blanc in the Loire you can find. It's amazing following as well, and prices are kind of up there to match. They're not as bad as, you know, Vaton or something like that. They always go up and they're collectible, and they last a long time. So let's go to the Rhone. I only picked out one thing from the Rhone. I saw this cool uh, 2000 uh, Jean-Louis Chav Hermitage mag. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. For a thousand sixty, great vintage, really cool. I think to see a mag of, of of this particular wine. What caught your attention? Yeah, so it's funny that I I saw those as well, and 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 was interested. The other there was another vintage, and I believe another Magnum of Shav too. There was. Uh, did you say there was? A, you mentioned the two thousand, right? The, yeah, it was a mag. Yeah, because there's a mag of ninety five in this week as yes. well. Uh, another amazing vintage twelve thirty. I mean that thing. Those wines are just, they're so long lived. So you could, you could, you could stash both those for another 10, 20 years, no problem. But yeah, I saw both those, those stuck out to me. Um, there's a Chateauneuf in this week that I, that I really, really like. And that is the Chateau La Nert Cuvée Cadet 15, 2015, which I think is pretty fairly priced at 80 bucks. Um, got a bunch of, Big scores, well, relatively, I guess, if that matters. But anyway, that wine stuck out to me because it's it's just really, really delicious. There's some Clos Saint Jean 03, Deus Ex, Ex Machina 03, obviously, is super, super, super hot vintage, but 
the O3 is relatively reasonable as for that particular cuvee compared to say like O5, which is also in new this week. Uh, so the O3 is 120 and the O5 uh, Deus Ex Machina is 195. And then there was some Delos San Joseph 2011, which I thought was a great deal for 35 bucks. Um, kind of a, you know, challenging vintage in many parts of the country, but wine advocate, 95 points, if that matters. So I think 95 point wine for 35 bucks from the Rhone uh, sounds like a pretty good deal to me. And uh, anything, anything else you want before we wrap up France, anything else you want to bring up? No, I think that kind of wraps it up. There's uh let's see, was there anything else that I wanted to point out? this week in France. No, I think those, those are, those are by all my main picks. There's yeah, Carte right. de Chum half bottles in this week too. I, I, I think I don't like to keep repeating myself, you know, with producers, but uh, Carte de Chum, I think there was some in last week or the week before I must've mentioned it. And then this week there's half bottles of 2010 for 35, um, which I think is great. It's just, it's amazing, amazing stuff. I skipped over that when we were talking about Loire. So two half bottles at 35 a piece from the, for the 2010 for Beaumard Cartouchon. And with that, that wraps up our tour, uh, our tour de France. Finally hammered in France. Finally hammered in France. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for us on the next episode and we'll talk about uh, the US and, and the rest of the world. With you as always, Finally Hammered, I am Jeff McGurn. Of course, this has been Paul Walker wishing you happy bidding and cheers. Cheers. <laughs>